welcome to Sports Focus, the show, Cowboy Nation. This is all about the Cowboys right now. I got my guest, Mr. Kevin Sivils. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey Jiscum. Right on, right on. <laughs> Always represent them Cowboys. <laughs> oh, I had to cross my name out. <laughs> I was like, you know what, fuck this. Uh, <laughs> it's been an interesting time, you know, in, in the free agency about our squad. Mm. Um, they made a very good signing. We was texting each other back and forth about, you know, how good this person is. Alfred Morris. We want some more. Um, now that we're here, explain your point. You was trying to tell me that ah, it's not that good of a signing or. No, I didn't say it wasn't that good of a signing. Exactly. We were talking about starting. Starting. Yeah, so yeah. starting. I see he's about to mix my words. Yeah. What is it now? Let's I get it said out. McFadden will be the starter. He said, no, they mm -hmm. should have a competition. I said, no, McFadden should be the starter because out of 12 games a starting, he got us over 1,000 yards. And he's a better blocker. Very he's true. a better blocker, McFadden? He's a better blocker. He's a That's better true. pass protection blocker. Yeah. Do you think there should be a competition in camp? I wouldn't mind it, but, I mean, like he said, after what McFadden has done, and I actually, I basically put him, you know, to the side when we did sign him. I didn't really think too much about it, mm -hmm. but when we couldn't pass the ball, we couldn't do anything else. When mm -hmm. it came down to running, Thankfully, that line was able to open up some gas from him and everything. And he right. took advantage of it. Yeah. Now, yeah. my thing is, if they were both signed together, oh yeah, then yes, yeah, let them compete. Let them compete. Mm -hmm. Let them compete. But so Don't far as it goes, it. Um, <clears throat> there shouldn't be a competition. Like Jerry said at the owners' meeting, that McFadden should. This is why I disagree. <laughs> uh, totally, <laughs> That's That's totally. It. How you guys view this thing? Um, like I text you, they were four and twelve. Mm -hmm. um, I understand the quarterback position is you know secure. Mm -hmm. I understand you know certain elements of the offensive line is secure. Everyone else is pretty much open for me, and I you know I, that's why I don't like the fact that um, you're gonna take this running back who's had been a successful starter in this league. Mm -hmm. McFadden has been around longer. Mm -hmm. He had his shot. Yeah, you had a real, real awesome offensive line to run behind, and you got them that thousand yards barely. You got a guy with that offensive line. You put him in camp. If you want to, that's why I say compete. If you like McFadden that much, okay, compete. Let's see who's the best. Here's my thing. But, hold 12, on now. Twelve oh, games. Oh. Now, I don't care about last year. They was four and twelve last year. With a quarterback in the backfield that nobody respected, so you're going to stack the line. Hey. Another thing you can look at, too, just because of Joseph Randolph. Um, <laughs> he was starting. That's another thing, too. If you mm -hmm. put him to the side. Bro, all I'm saying is, no, because you got, you got Alpha Morris right now. Mm -hmm. You got him right now. Mm -hmm. You got him in, in, in when, the, when the training camp starts. You put him in camp, and you say, okay, let's see who's the best. Right. Who's the running, the block, who can, who can take the game. Don't do and and. I, I hope we both can agree. Let's hope that they don't do this running back by committee thing again. Mm. Like when you would bring McFadden in. Okay, then take him out and then put Morris in. And then bring McFadden back in. And then have Dunbar come in for a hot second. And then bring him in. And you're doing all this crap. When said. are they going to learn that that doesn't work? Pick mm. one. Either you pick McFadden, you pick Morris, you pick whoever you got there. That's your running back. And then let's go. They probably looking at it like the Eagles. Nobody want to just go and be like how the Eagles did, putting pieces in like that, taking this dude in, taking one out. Honestly, you right about it. Let him go ahead. If somehow Morris just shows that with this line, he is a lot better. But I mean, because I want the guy that was his rookie year. He was sixteen hundred yards, and then he went to twelve. But he was he was a good back. But can he catch out the backfield? Was that one of his things he can do? Like so was he consistent? He can. He, McFadden can do I that, and Morris can do that. And the though. biggest thing is. McFadden is the better pass block. Yeah, that's the only thing. Well, if I don't. Can, I haven't watched enough Washington games to see, you know, because the dead skins. I don't really focus. I mean, on let's put it like this: RG three rookie season showed that he didn't really get hurt like that. I mean, I gotta say, he must have been doing his job right. Somebody right. was doing something that year. No, 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 no. RG three was running all over the place, so you had to figure you either had to sit back and wait for him to try to run or pass the ball because you couldn't rush up against him. Mm -hmm. 
And whenever he got his yards was on the, the play option, the run option. It's when he got the majority of his yards. But I'm going to say this, and I'm going to leave it alone. Number one, over 1,000 yards in 12 starts. Mm. Then you had to do the rotation the first four games. Then your quarterback goes down. No one <laughs> feared those other quarterbacks in the backfield. And you have to give it to the offensive line because now you have to be, uh, have a running back behind you that they're used to blocking for. So now they got to get used to blocking for Alfred Morris too. Right. Well, that's, that's why you have a training camp. And that's why I have a problem with Mr. Jones because I, I, this is like crazy that um, I understand he has the title of general manager. And I really don't hear this. You correct me if I'm wrong that your owner slash general manager is making player decisions on the field when they didn't even, they're not even suit up yet. Because he said when they made the signing, right, when they made the signing for Alpha Morris, oh, no, Darren McFadden will start and he will get the bulk of the carries. I'm like, oh. why don't we see what happens, you know, in training camp? Maybe Darren McFadden comes in a totally different dude. So the mindset is, no, McFadden's a starter no matter what he does during training camp. You're going to tell a 4-12 and team, no, no, you're secure. You have a job. There's only a few players mm. on any team that has a job regardless of what they do. This is a 4-12 and Dallas Cowboy team that was on the cuffs of a Super Bowl. And I feel the management let the team down and let those players down, how they handled Dez, how they handled the running back situation with DeMarco, and how they handled everything in the in the – in the uh, training camp as far as who's going to play. You're going to believe in a panty thief, Joseph Randall, to be your starter. <laughs> he said to yeah, that's You're going to believe in Brandon <laughs> Wheaton to say he's the purest passer in the NFL. My thing is, that's uh, the, for me, that's the problem. Yeah, but my thing is you're putting 4-12 and 12 on just the running back. I ain't putting 4-12. Yeah, no, no, no. Every time whole. you bring up McFadden, you McFadden, keep saying you're 4-12. They're 4-12. And 12. They you're four four and 12. 12. But he was on himself. Okay, that's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. You expect that man to do I don't all care. himself? You know, I, no. you know how I, we talked about Rome on how he ain't getting no competition. It's a little late for that to be challenging him now. Mm -hmm. But everybody else is up for grabs. Besides, like I said, that offensive line, they, they, who, what, what are you playing favorites for? What are you, and that's then let's not even get into what Jerry said about Brandon Carr or what Jason Garrett said about Brandon Carr. Mm. Oh, so they're oh. basically like, oh, you know what? We're going to keep Brandon Carr because he's good. You guys just don't see it. I mean, come on. That whole thing, what they were saying, I understand he's consistent, haven't been hurt, been played through the whole entire wow. thing. But it's just, the, it's just the contract that really bothers me. Contract really bothers me. And the biggest thing is you can't, you can't sit there with a 4-3 Tampa 2 defense with no freaking pass rush. Because your corner's going to get burnt all day. And that's exactly what happened. So, mm. yeah. That's you what, need you need a pass rush. That's what if you don't have no pass time, rush, man. your corners are useless. And, don't get and no wrong. matter who they are. I like Derek McFadden. I love what he did. I like the the fact that he had a redemption about him because oh, yeah. he was they was crapping on him all season. Mm -hmm. And he came out and, and in he, Oakland. he did yeah, he oh, yeah. did Oakland, his he job. I understand the Cowboys feel like, oh man, you know, he really stepped up. But you're four and twelve, and this is the Dallas Cowboys, the last I remember. And four and twelve is unacceptable. Four and twelve is all on Jerry Jones. It is unacceptable, and I don't, I can't believe that my team and my ownership wants to sit there and be like, "Well, you know, the biggest thing is, my blame isn't mostly on those guys on the field. It's, my blame yeah, it's is no, no, no. It's, my blame is on the guy who's standing on the sideline who's supposed to prepare the next man up to do what he's supposed to do. And yes. if the preparation was not done correctly, you get the four and twelve. That's why. Now Jerry also. Is mm, in the new oh faces. Gosh, it's, it's Where'd you right. get this one at? You know I had to get that one. <laughs> Jerry's also kind of when they had that look. they had that concussion uh summit, you know. Yeah. And he <laughs> he, he boldly just came out. Yo. Lincoln football to concussions is absurd. Yo. Now other owner uh Earth <laughs> has came out to back him up, but Jerry oh. shut your butt up. Mm. Mm -mm. That was embarrassing. Just man, be, for quiet. A fan be right quiet. Be quiet. <laughs> I still looked at him. I was like, yo, did you really say that, man? Like, come on. Jerry. Let's okay. turn the set down. Helmet. Please. Your head is in there. <laughs> Hit something. But um, your head is moving around. What do you think is going to happen? Mm -mm, I think, mm -mm. I, you know what? <sighs> Jerry. Let me clean it up for Jerry. I don't you think know, he just means Please. football in general. I think he yeah. just means NFL. 
NFL. Because like we discussed before, you take some hits in peewee leagues that's yep. like, whoa. In high school, in college, like the kid who died who had the um who died of an aneurysm because yeah. he wanted to play his senior game that night, had a concussion and wouldn't tell anybody. Wouldn't tell his girlfriend, his parents, nobody, dropped dead. So you have this stuff happening all the time, but no one get tested for it until you get to the NFL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No one tests for it in the NCAA in high school. And when you when you think about it, you know the concussion. That's in all sports. Yeah, you can yeah, physical sports. All sports yeah. I mean, all you know physical sports. You know they have. How come mm. this is not like the thing in boxing? No. And that's the ultimate sport, the, the UFC punching, and all yeah, of them. Yeah. That's you're hitting your head. You, that's all you do. But somehow football has gotten grouped into this, and now everyone wants to piggyback on that. Oh, football! You know football. Football. Yeah. Other sports is because baseball, they're saying man. it's getting more aggressive, and the hits are getting more violent. Well, your athletes are getting much faster and bigger. bigger. So, so I mean, I, mean, I don't know what you want them to do. That's right. But hey, uh, next thing you know, make it's gonna be flag gears. football. Find somebody. <laughs> flag. flag. Two hand tag. <laughs> I got you. Please. Let me in the game. I want to play now. Touch. A million dollars. You. I do it. Oh, I didn't touch it with two hands. Two oh. hand touch. No pity pat. Got to be two. two. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, start doing horse collar like yo. I got you, man. Uh, oh man. Now the the, the draft is coming up, mm, and um, very interesting. What do y'all think about the receiver position? Because Des, as we all know and love, is a beast. But he had no help when he uh, he got hurt, and which goes to what I said: Williams the next Vince. man up because Williams sucked. He did. Terrence Williams. I was he really disappointed sucked. too. I was very disappointed. In Your Terrence. chance I was to shine. I, I really and thought he was going to step he up. He should have had a, a thousand yard season. Something. And um, and it didn't happen. You know, I know the. I understand the quarterback play, whatever. Yeah. But there were several times, you know, he just he didn't come drops. back. He didn't make the play. Yeah, you know? and that was now. The thing this, that having said me. that, do you think the Cowboys in the draft should address the wide receiver position with a with a high pick or a, a known uh, college player? Because he, they're going to have to to compliment Des. I say, if anything, the late round probably pick somebody out. You never know. You can find somebody like a like a free like agent. That. But that's what I hate. The I, no, I want to say free agent. He, draft he, he kills draft. me with that. I'm just gonna wait till the draft is over and find a you know diamond in the rough. It happened a couple of times. It's not gonna keep happening yeah, over they, and over. It happened and with over Miles and Austin again. and yeah, it's not gonna. We happen. haven't had one of those in a no, while. We haven't. No. Yeah. No, so maybe that should tell Jerry one. something. It should, but I still say, if anything, just try to find something to draft. Maybe some of those veteran um, receivers that's out there, Rodney White, they still um, got yeah, a few Rodney other... still got some gas in his tank. Exactly. He's been playing consistently throughout his league. I mean, his the, career and everything like that. Vic biggest, was his quarterback, so you know he wasn't really getting played like that. The biggest thing was Julio just goes bananas and you forget all about him <sighs> over in the corner. It's like really Man. no point. Yeah, you know. Rodney but White just one, didn't show anything but catch the ball and he's going down as soon as he gets it and everything. But you'll notice that, that most it. of the Super Bowl champions sit up there, they have a one-two punch at that receiver spot. If yeah. one starts to fall, the other one does pick up. And we haven't had it. No. We had it the, uh, last year. Yeah. Terrence well, was on his game. But this year, it's like... Would that be attributed to Roman because, being healthy? And at the same time, Dez was healthy too. You know, they go and pay attention to him and... But we you had Williams your chance through. to be the man. They did, they do, they're not going to respect you like they respect Dez, so you're not going to constantly get the double team. Nope. No. You're going to roam free. Mm -hmm. And he should have dominated. Yes, he, he should have dominated. That's your chance to go ahead and show that you got to respect me, too. And man. it's such a, you know, I hope Terrence, it is the last year of his contract. So, oh, man. you know, once again, folks, that's all the time we got. Cowboy Nation be back. Thank you, Mr. Civils. And thank you, Mr. Jeffrey. Just come. Yes, sir. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Peace! <laughs>